Hello to all our wonderful drivers. My name is Jennifer. I work in the compliance department. Um, I just wanted to do a quick overview and then get to your questions. Thank you for submitting some of those questions. And if you end up having a question after you've seen the video, um, et cetera, feel free to reach out. Um, hopefully it, it sparks some ideas for you. So first that overview, each company sets their own guidelines on it. We don't allow you to use it for personal use if the trailer is loaded. So if you have a personal errand to run um, because you're pulling work with you, it has to stay on driveline. Um, company drivers get one hour PC, lease operators get two hours of personal conveyance. Anything over those allowances does need to be regular drive. We'd actually truly recommend that you don't use it. Um, if simply for the fact it gives DOT one more thing they can audit you on and the fines for it can be pretty stringent. So if you can avoid using it, um, absolutely, you, you don't have to use it. Uh, if you stick to driveline, they can't accuse you of misusing personal conveyance. So when do we allow personal conveyance to be used? You can use it if you're empty or your bobtail for personal use only. So like I mentioned before, if you have a personal errand to run, but the trailer is loaded, you do have to stay on driveline because you're taking work with you. Um, you can't use it to go to the shop or get fuel because both of those are work related. The one time you can use it when you're loaded is when you're leaving the shipper receiver, you're out of hours, they're kicking you off the property. Or if law enforcement says you can't park here and they make you move. The two times people use that when they shouldn't, they load somewhere in the morning. By the time they get to where they're stopping for the night, they ran out of time, so they stopped and switched it to personal conveyance. I'm checking, were they just kicked off shipper receiver property? No. Were they parked and law enforcement made them move? No. If you don't meet either of those two criteria, we do ask that you stay on drive, go into violation, get to a safe spot. Once you get stopped, if you'll put in a remark, um, whether accident, traffic, construction, whatever the holdup was, and let us know the next day what you encountered that you didn't anticipate or that was really unexpected. Other time they use it, um, when ideally we would prefer not, is after a roadside breakdown. By the time they're repaired, they're out of hours. They want to use it in that situation. It really depends on if law enforcement came by in person. Uh, if the officer comes by and says, hey, when you're all done here, get off the side of the road, um, you can write in the remarks, law enforcement made me move. You qualify to use it in that situation. But if the officer did not come by in person, we'd actually prefer you drive on drive, go into violation, get to a safe spot. You have a repair receipt to show an officer. It's going to be all over your dispatch what happened. Since they weren't there in person, we prefer that you handle it that way. So on to your questions. Question one was, if I have 15 minutes of regular service left and I'm ready to leave a shipper, but the nearest safe haven is more than 30 minutes away, do I start PC to get to a safe haven or do I wait for the clock to burn out and then go? So the answer is when you have time left, but you can't make it all the way, use your best judgment. Are you able to linger for the 15 minutes until your clock runs out so that you could, truly could be out of time and use personal conveyance to leave? Is there a spot midway where you would be able to stop safely, switch it to personal conveyance to get to the rest of the way? If you're, you, there's, staying is not an option, stopping halfway is not an option, um, go ahead and start when you leave in personal conveyance. That being said, if by some miracle you make it there when you still would have had time left, I do expect you to switch the PC back to drive um, just so that you're staying really above board. Question two, do we follow federal government rules or Wilson rules? According to federal laws under COVID-19, we can PC for multiple hours under a load, but Wilson states only one hour. So which is it? Answer is please follow Wilson rules. It can be a little confusing to know which way to go, but as long as our DOT number is on the side of the truck, um, those are the rules that we'd like you to abide by is our, our rules. Um, question three, should a driver use PC even if they have enough driver hours to their resting area? So if you have enough hours to get to your resting area, you have a loaded trailer with you, something that's work-related in any way, no, do not use PC. 
If you have plenty of hours, you just got empty, you wanna to head to the truck stop to wait for your next load, then yes, you could use PC, but if you've already started your clock for the day, you got empty this morning, um, you were on driveline, on duty for all of that, um, it, it's just best practice to stay regular drive and not use PC when you've already started your day. Question four, can I move from the driveline to PC because I ran out of hours? If you run out of hours, you can't move to PC. The only time the FMCSA notates safe haven is okay is when you're out of hours, you need to get to a safe spot after loading or unloading. So if you weren't held up at the shipper receiver, you were just driving your normal day, you encountered weather, traffic, accident, construction, you stay on drive. You're under load, it's work related, and like we talked about before, please put in a remark um, when you switch after finishing driving on what the situation was that you encountered. Um, not only is that something that helps the DOT officer, but it helps us here in the office as well. Question five, can I use PC on the customer's property to move the, to the dock because I'm out of hours? As far as using PC on the customer property, no, it is not a personal movement. It's a work-related movement. Please use yard move as long as you're on private property. It will interrupt your break, but it will not put you into violation. Question six, I am done at my 90. I have hours on my clock. They said I can continue my break, but I have to move out of the unloading area to another part of their property. Can I use PC to move to park? So you can use PC to leave a customer if you're not under dispatch, but we still need to see good rest. So show eight hours of rest at the end. If you started your break four hours ago and then you personal convey to a truck stop, we'd still like to see a good solid chunk of sleep or birth after to prove to the officer that you were rested. Um, ideally eight hours, but whatever you feel like you're, you're communicating to an officer if something happened that you did in fact get enough rest in that time frame. If you have several personal conveyance movements in your 10 hour break, you are not rested. And this is discoverable information if you are involved in a crash and it goes to court or that next level of things. Question seven, my fleet manager sent me a pre-plan. I have not yet sent in my confirmation. I am done at my 90 and I don't wanna stay here. Can I PC to my favorite truck stop that's 40 miles away and just happens to be a mile away from my load if I do end up, ex in fact, accepting that load. So uh, no, once you have knowledge of a possible load, personal conveyance in the direction of the load is not permitted. So don't, don't try to be sneaky, please. Just stay really above board so that you're not jeopardizing yourself or us. Question nine, I am out of hours at the customer. I do not want to complete my break here, even though they will let me. Could I use PC? So if you're out of hours and they will let you stay on site, please stay there. FMCSA shows the resting location must be the first location reasonably available. And you're already there. You are already at that closest, safest location. Um, question 10, I left my receiver under dispatch. I used personal conveyance to safe haven to the closest rest area and I completed my 10 hours. Now I'd like to travel to a truck stop that's 30 minutes away and eat at their restaurant. My appointment at the shipper isn't until late tonight, so I don't really wanna start my 14 hour clock this early in the day. Could I personal convey to that restaurant? So the answer to this one is, you are under dispatch, you completed your break, you want to run a personal errand, you, you can't use PC to extend your day, it would be better to use driveline and then do a split, 7, 3, 8, 2, if you're looking to extend your 14-hour clock. If you're doing it that way, then you're doing it within DOT's rules. If you do it the other way, um, then you're kind of opening yourself up to some liability. So please don't use PC to extend the day. Next question, I am bobtailing. Since I'm bobtail and I don't have a trailer with me, I can PC all the way to the customer, right? Answer to this one, you want to PC to the customer just because you're bobtail. This is still a work-related movement and it needs to be driveline. Next question, I dropped my trailer. I went on home time. Can I personal conveyance to return to work? Um, I will end up picking up a different trailer than the one I originally dropped. 
So the answer to that is using personal conveyance to return to work. If you're one of our long haul guys, then no, not really. You're using it, you're extending your 14 hour clock. It's not a return movement to the exact same trailer since you're getting a different trailer. And personal conveyance cannot be used to obtain an empty trailer because that's a work related movement. Next question, I am a local company driver. Can I personal conveyance home and to the yard each day? As a local driver, as long as you go to work at the same location, return to that same location that night, and you make sure you get enough rest in between your work periods, then yes. You are still limited to the time frame of PC that's allotted, so company driver one hour, lease operator two hours. As long as you can return and all of that in that time frame, then you're good. Question 14, with my previous, previous experience at this customer, my shipper receiver does not have overnight parking. Am I okay to plan to use PC to leave when I'm empty since I already know that that's the situation? So the answer is using PC as your plan for leaving a customer is not actually ideal. You wanna budget the time you need to get in and out of the customer. If you don't have enough time for both, you shouldn't go in. The Personal conveyance safe haven movement is for when the shipper receiver held you up when you've been stuck because of their delay, not for when you pulled in two, out, two minutes before your clock stopped and now you're out of time. Um, you still want to do your trip planning. Using it the other way is, is an abuse of the safe haven rule and makes it more likely that a DOT would crack down. So do what you can to use it um, within those guidelines. Next question, I drop the trailer in the Pacific Yard and I live in Bremerton, which is about two hours away. Could I use personal conveyance to go home? So the answer is if you live a ways away and you wanna use PC to drive home, first, as a company driver, you'd only get the hour to go home. So you don't have enough to go the full distance. And if you only have one hour left on your clock, we would not recommend using the one hour and then switching to personal conveyance and driving the rest of the way home. Because if you got in an accident, it's completely the other person's fault, they ran into you, you could still lose your livelihood, livelihood over their poor choice simply because the lawyer would make the case if you hadn't been extending your day, you wouldn't have been in that spot at that time. So um, if you're going home long enough to get a restart, you have the hours available on your clock to get there. Just go home on driveline. You're, you're gonna get the restart anyway. You're not saving anything. Driveline is definitely one less thing for DOT to audit you on. And ultimately we do not recommend heading home unless you have the hours to do so. We just don't want you to open yourself up to that liability of being further than your day it actually allotted. Next question, I dropped the trailer. I bobtailed over to the doctor's office for an appointment, but by the time I got done, I'm, I'm gonna be out of hours. Could I use personal conveyance in that situation? Okay, so you're out of hours after running a personal errand. Um, do you have enough time um, from how your day got structured where you could turn it into a split? Uh, kind of, again, the same answer. We only recommend using PC if you, for personal use if you have the hours available to do so. Otherwise, the, the whole liability thing. So um, ideally, make sure that you have a plan in that situation. Next question, I got to the customer to deliver the load. They weren't ready for me, they wouldn't let me stay, so I personal conveyed over to the truck stop and back. Is that okay? So you're, you're saying the customer isn't ready, they sent you away, question, did they let you drop the trailer at their location so that you bobtailed to the truck stop and back? Um, if yes, then you're, you're okay, because you left work at the work location. Um, and as long as you don't fuel when you're at the truck stop, you're not doing anything work related when you get there. If however, you, they didn't let you leave the trailer, you have the loaded trailer with you, you're bringing the loaded trailer back because you're carrying work with you, it still needs to be driveline, not personal conveyance. Next question, there was a personal, I'm sorry, there was a product claim on my load. I have three boxes of rejected product on the trailer and I have time on my clock. Since I don't have a load, could I use personal conveyance? So you still have product on the trailer, consider yourself 
loaded. You still have work on the trailer. It's not completely empty. In this case, you need to use driveline, please. And if you're out of hours, then the safe haven rule applies. But since you have hours, you have work with you, you do need to be in a working status. Next question, I did a 7-3 split. On my seven hour break, I wanna use personal conveyance to run a personal errand. Would that work? We've, we've seen this a lot lately. So uh, DOT rules for the split are that the seven hours, the longer time frame must be uninterrupted sleep or birth. So if you switch to PC in the middle of that movement at any point in that seven, eight hours, um, it's no longer uninterrupted and you just lost everything, canceled the split. So if you're doing a split, remember that you cannot move out of sleep or birth until you have that full big long chunk on there. I am under dispatch loading tomorrow and I've been heading towards the shipper today. I am running right up against my 11 hour clock. I made it to Coeur d'Alene, but there was no parking. So I'm thinking I need to go nine miles down the road to Post Falls. Can I use personal conveyance since I'm bobtailed? So you are bobtail and you ran out of time, but you are also under dispatch and you're headed in the direction of the load. So because of that situation, you are doing a work-related movement. It does need to be driveline. Even though you ran out of time, still stay on drive. Just don't cut it quite that close next time, if possible. Next question, I'm in Colorado. I am at the Eisenhower Tunnel, and I just found out I can't fit my 14-foot trailer through their 13-foot-9 tunnel. Um, so I'm thinking I'm going to use personal commands to backtrack, and then once I start covering new ground, then I'll use driveline. Is that okay um, on your guys' side? So um, in this instance, it does sound like you wanna backtrack and use personal conveyance. And I'm, I'm thinking the trailer is loaded in this situation. Um, if it is, there's, there's the two times we allow it PC to be used when you have a loaded trailer, when you just got kicked off ship or receiver property, or if you were parked and law enforcement made you move. In this instance, it does not sound like you meet either of those two criteria. So in this instance, even though you're backtracking, recovering old ground, um, still work related, we still want you to be on driveline. So that's all the questions. You can see from the questions, the easiest question to ask yourself is, is it in any way work related? Am I using it to extend my day? And if the answer is yes, do not use personal conveyance. We do try our best to audit the report every day. So if we ever can't tell if you were loaded or empty, we will call you to double check. If you can type your own remark in the comments instead of using one of the pre-built ones, that helps a lot. Um, we appreciate you and everything you do. There's a zillion things you deal with every day and it's not easy. So thank you. Reach out if you have any questions and have a great day. Mm -hmm.